Gazkul is being told by his gods, Gork and Mork, to fight back Did for- Did you really just say Gork and Mork? Yeah, that's the names of the Gork gods. <laughs> so no, one is brutal but cunning, and the other one's cunning but brutal. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, welcome back to In Real Lore. Today, Nick has a special treat for me. We are going to be starting the first of our mini episode series on the War of Armageddon. I have no idea what this is, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I look so confused. <laughs> I wanted to kind of go into the War of Armageddon and try and explain why it is important. It's not war. It's actually wars. There's multiple wars of Armageddon. Mm -hmm. Three total so far. Okay. Um, but... It's a ma massive part of the lore. It's a huge part of like the background to Warhammer. There's been codexes. There has been entire like history set in it. So I want to go over, uh, do a couple episodes on why it's important, why a little bit about each detail, and also why Armageddon is important in the first place. So that's actually what this mm. first episode is going to be, is not uh, on the actual Armageddon itself, but what makes Armageddon so important? Interesting. Okay, question for you. Yes. Because when we were doing research on this episode, you noticed that no one else covered this. Why do you think that is if it's so important? Because it's kind of, a, it, it, there's a lot to it. So people have done little pieces about it, but nothing as an overview for someone that's new that's coming into it. How many episodes do you think it's going to take us? I think I can get it in two. That's it? Yeah, yeah. For something so difficult, you can do it in two episodes. Yeah. It's basically just to get the gist of each part. So I'll tell you exactly how I'm going to split this out afterwards. But I'm going to start off with Armageddon itself and kind of give you an idea of the planet. And then we'll go into why it's important afterwards. So the main thing about Armageddon is... Oh, it's a planet. Yes. Yeah, I didn't know that. So it is a planet that's actually on the edge of the solar... Um, Sorry, uh, segmentum solar. So that is the galaxy is basically divided up into these different segments. Segmentum solar is basically the core of the Imperium, the center of which is Terra itself. So it is situated on the very edge of it. Yeah, it's basically in the, the way of multiple trade routes. And Armageddon as a planet itself is vastly important for industrial factories. So it, the planet is a hive city or a hive planet. So a hive city is basically, think of New York, but like 20 layers deep of New York. So you have New York and then you have another New York yeah. on top of it. Okay, big city. Big city, okay. billions of people live in like that small area. Mm -hmm. The entire planet is that. So the entire planet is just desolate, like factories and the air is just disgusting. The ecology you know is picturing? completely destroyed. I'm just picturing cyberpunk. Yeah. Yeah, like literally like I'm picture that's what I'm picturing with when you're talking to me, you know. Or arcane, like you know like just like the the way the high undercity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. undercity is basically mm -hmm. a good way of what a hive city would kind of look like. And the entire world is just that. It's mm -hmm. blasted, disgusting, but wars keep being fought over this one planet. And there are a couple things that have made it. Well, wait, Armageddon's a planet, you said, right? Armageddon is a okay. planet. I thought it was a city, sorry. No. Now the Things that make it important are the Astra Militarum regiment that's actually divined from there or tithed from the planet called the Armageddon Steel Legion. They are mechanized infantry. So they kind of roll up with an APCs. Is that Admax? No. Oh. They just, they have a very World War II German look. They have gas masks. Oh, <gasps> I remember these yeah, in the our one Discord. With the beige. We yeah. were talking about them in their Discord, weren't we? Yes. For those of you who are interested in our Discord, sure. let us know. Join our Patreon. Join our memberships. Yeah. Um, Teach me stuff in your free time. But yeah, one person that's in there really likes the Steel Legion. But they, in a comparison to like Krieg versus Steel Legion, Krieg is a very World War I German look. The Steel Legion is more 1940s. I remember World this. War II. They were cute. I actually really like the, yeah, the yeah, look of them. Yeah, they were cute. They were cute. But they're mechanized infantry. Yeah. So they will, they don't just like march out into the field. They actually are in APCs, chimeras. Don't know what that means. Armored personnel carry. Okay. So they roll completely into the battlefield and then jump out from their... Seems like the smarter the way to do it. Yeah. Jump out, take shots, jump back in, drive off. That's the smart way to do it. And out go. Yeah. While they're also bombarding with artillery. Mm -hmm. 
There's also the fact that like the second war of Armageddon has major orc infestation because of Gazkul Thraka, major, major character. And Yark is a part of that. So there's all these stories that have been built around there. But to know why these wars have actually been fought over this one particular planet, we have to kind of go way back. So before the planet existed, before the uh, the emperor was put onto the golden throne and just kind of sitting there like paraplegic before the heresy, before anything else. We're going back to the Great Crusade. I don't know what the heresy is, but that's hearsay. It's just a historical thing. Hmm. So maybe we'll cover it one day. Maybe. But the Great Crusade is happening. The emperor has gone out from Earth, from Terra, and is starting to basically take over as much of the former human empire that existed before. Is this still 40,000 years into the future? Or is this further back? Like this is for like this is 29. OK. Yeah. So the emperor is trying to reunite all of humanity. He's going out and basically trying to find all his primarchs and find all of his sons. So that way he can take over everything. He is doing it on, kind of on a timetable because there is the the orcs are have created this entire empire. And this empire is centered on a planet called Ulanor. Now, the orcs, when they kind of get before uh, when they're all together, they kind of want to fight more and they start learning more about technology and they have this kind of gestalt mindset. So that yeah. way, the more of them are around, the more they understand, the more they can build, the more they can make things out of nothing almost. So it gives you the idea that they believe things work, but it's Mm -hmm. just mind essentially. And this was the height of their empire. And the emperor realized that if he didn't get to crushing this little orc empire, it was going to destroy the nascent Imperium before he could even get it off the ground. So he was on a timetable to put it down as quickly as possible. They had built up this empire and the Emperor had finally reunited with all of his sons, mainly with Horus. And he was going to basically try and attack the Orc Empire as hard as possible. And what their plan was, was that Horus was the one leading it, had taken the Ultramarines, White Scars, and a few other legions, and Titans and other Admech stuff, or Mechanicum as they were called at that point, and attacked some of the outer planets of the solar system. Which the orcs, being orcs, were like, ooh, fight! Let's go fight! Big things fight! Let's go! So they diverted all of their fleets and everything to go fight these huge legions because the Ultramarines were 200,000 space marines. There was a whole whack load of them comparatively to everything else. Mm -hmm. But Horus, with the Emperor, went straight for the capital city and went straight for the capital planet to fight Orlok himself. It was a steer, uh, spear tip attack, essentially. What's that mean? Distract and then go as hard as possible mm, for the heart, okay. right? Yeah. No big attack, no nothing, just a tight spear directly at the enemy mm-hmm. to try and take them out. So they got to the planet and he actually went, Horus went with his 10 Terminators and went to the throne room of Urlach and they fought at this point. And he was there with a specific captain of his, the first captain, Ezekiel Abaddon, which if you know his name, you know his name. Abaddon's the big bad now. Okay. Horus fought with Urlach directly, going complete duel one-to-one until he was able to actually overpower Urlach, picked him up and hucked him off the top of the tower and leaving him a sticky mess at the bottom of the uh, of the courtyard, essentially. Mm-hmm. He turned back to see that the rest of the like honor guard of the orcs were all killed. All his terminators were killed, except for his one captain, Ezekiel. So they had finished this off, and they defeated the emperor or the empire. Wait, I'm confused. The, the, you the said orcs. the emperor. The emperor. And, sorry. Okay, sorry. The, the okay. So. The orc empire had been dissolved at this point because mm-hmm. what happens is when you have when the orcs have a one big bad or like one big boss, it and that boss is destroyed or killed, it kind of divides them because then there's one big power vacuum where they must fight to figure out who the big boss is now. Ah, uh, okay. And in that confusion, They're they so were able stupid. to clean them up and just take out the rest of the. They're so rudimentary. 
They're very rudimentary, but that's what's great about them. Yeah. They're very simple. They know what they like. They know what they're doing. They just want to fight. They want to have a good time. Yeah. So the emperor at this point was like, awesome. Let's clean this planet up. And they cleaned it up and they brought giant highways from Terra. They put it on the planet from mountains to mountains so they could have a giant parade with titans for the sake of it. Huh, and this was called the Triumph of Ulanor. This was the height of the Great Crusade. This was when the Imperium was at its most powerful. And this is the point that the Emperor himself said, I am done with the Great Crusade. Horus, you are now War Master. You're going to take over the rest of it. I'm going back to Terra. I'm not telling you why. I'm not telling you anything. I don't trust any of you. Okay, thanks. Bye. And he just pieced completely out. Mm -hmm. This is where things start to fall apart for the rest of the heresy and where Horus starts to realize that he can't trust the emperor and those doubts kind of start seeping into his mind over how the empire and how everything goes. So for those of you who are interested in, in not missing part two, make sure you like, subscribe, or follow our podcast. And that way you will know when Nick releases and drops our second episode, part two to the War of Armageddon. But Ulanor itself was peaceful and it was actually colonized by humans for the next 2000 years. And the orcs themselves were completely disbanded. They were mostly like a nuisance for those 2000 mm -hmm. years. It was kind of peaceful in those 2000 years because, you know, orcs would show up and there would only be a small force and they'd fight them. But in those two intermediate 2000 years, there was one particular orc that hated the empire, the empire, the Imperium. Sorry, there's too many words. Of, around the word of empire. Mm. So he hated the Imperium. He hated everything that they had done because they had destroyed what was the great orc empire and brought them to ruin. And this was the beast. And this is what began the- He seriously was called the beast. He was just called the beast. Oh dear God. And this began the war of the beasts. Oh my God. <laughs> so creative. This is probably- The beast. The, the beast. war of the beast. Or the death of the beast. Or the grave of the beast. The orc names are fantastic. Usually they're like shoot daka or something along those lines. This guy's just like, no, I'm the beast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The yeah. beast. But he started actually working together and he actually was fighting the Imperium with something called an attack moon, which was literally a moon station that could instantly teleport itself from any lo from one spot in the galaxy to any other spot. I don't know what that is. It's just basically like a giant a space station. station. Yeah. yeah. But it's just, it can instantaneously go from one place to another. Uh-huh. And as soon as it kind of reaches that one space, anything that was on the other side where it or or originated from, anything could just slip on through and just attack wherever they were. So like an entire orc fleet could be hanging out with the attack moon, the attack moon disappears, and they just go show up where they want to be and start fighting everything. Mm -hmm. And they were actually putting the Imperium on the back foot because at this point, Primarchs had started disappearing. The Imperium had been at peace for so long that they didn't understand how to fight anything. And with the attack moons, he was able to overtake Ulanor again as the throne of the Orc Empire and try and bring itself back into a, a another height of culture and technology for the orcs. So you keep talking about Ulanor, but where does Armageddon come into play here? I'm getting there. Does it turn into Armageddon, like the planet? I'm getting there. Yeah, it does, isn't it? I'm getting so I'm there. like, why do I care about a planet called Ulanor? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Because it turns into Armageddon, doesn't it? I'm not telling you. Yes, it does. Am, you gotta keep the mystique. I'm just gonna guess it. You're guessing. Okay, yeah. your guess is that Ulanor becomes well, Armageddon. I don't know, I'm just gonna, yeah, I guess it's gonna become Armageddon. Okay. Am I right? I'm not telling you. So the attack moons I'm basically- I'm asking the audience, not you. <laughs> so the attack moons basically were able to take Ulanor over and then there was three subsequent battles over Ulanor itself. The first one, nothing really happened. The second one, the Primarch Vulcan, who is of the Salamanders, he's basically the biggest one and he's got basically the darkest dark skin. It's actually like a pure black with bright red eyes, but he's the nicest of all of them. Like he actually wants to give everyone hugs. But he fought on Ulanor, fought against the beast, um, 
tackled the beast into a giant reactor full of wah energy. Mm -hmm. And usually Vulcan, if he's killed by something, he just comes back because he's something called a perpetual. But he activated his hammer, obliterated the beast, and exploded the reactor. Like, it subsumed him, and he was completely killed. Mm, okay. We think. He hasn't yeah. come back yet, but this is the last Vulcan's ever been seen. He just kind of exploded into wah energy, and that was the end of that. But it wasn't the end of the War of the Beast, because they were trying to make more of a narrative over, out of it, so there was more The Beasts. There was so, more. like, more... Like different orcs that were the there beast? There were different orcs that showed up that okay, were okay, as strong as like, the beast. But it wasn't that the beast came back. No. Okay. So a... So the beast 2.0. And the beast 5.0 okay. almost. Basically, there were orcs that were 15 feet tall and much stronger. They are almost to like... They were called prime orcs. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the Imperial Fist chapter master went attacked Ulanor directly with a group of sisters of battle and they had kidnapped an orc psyker and the sisters are not sisters of battle, sisters of silence they kidnapped an orc sister went to the throne room an again orc psyker. an orc psyker yeah they went to the throne room to fight 15 of the beasts and they were able to somehow kill off all the beasts and the sisters of silence were able to transmute the orc psychic pa psyker power to make anti wa energy which completely uh, decimated the ability for the orcs to fight and ulanor at that point was actually being built up as attack an attack planet so there was so much technology on it they were going to use that planet to attack terra itself and def destroy terra i feel like orc um lore is just because it's cool. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That is 100% what the orc lore is. Okay, so yes, we've done this. When is the War of Armageddon coming into play? Getting bored, TikTok, 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 TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. All right, so after the War of the Beast was, had concluded and they were able to wipe away the entire thing, the Imperium and the, the Imperial Fist chapter master, who now became the leader of the, the Imperium for a while, said, we don't like this planet anymore. The orcs keep showing up. They keep coming back to this planet. Throw it into the sun. And they were telling the Adeptus Mechanicus to do this. Mm -hmm. They're like, we don't want any more exterminatus it thrown into the sun. We don't want to hear it anymore. And the Admech, with their mechadendrites, were like, hmm, the technology, knowledge, hmm, technology, knowledge, hmm, Xenos knowledge. So instead, they used the teleporter technology that had made the entire planet capable of moving mm -hmm. they teleported it to a system on the edge of the segmentum solar and falsified the record saying they had thrown it into the sun once it was in that new planet they just completely stripped it of all technology that that was left on the planet from the orcs and just said it's good for colonization and they left it be okay two thousand years later colonization started to happening and they named it Armageddon. Okay. So yes, you are right. See, told you. So Ulanor. I'm, just, I'm too smart. Ulanor was what Armageddon was. Ulanor is what Armageddon. No, Armageddon is what Ulanor was. But no one knows this. But it might also be why these orcs keep trying to attack Armageddon constantly because they're trying to get back to the throne world, just as the War of the Beast had brought them back to Ulanor to recreate the old orc empire. Gazkol is being told by his gods, Gork and Mork, to fight back Did for- Did you really just say Gork and Mork? Yeah, that's the names of the orc gods. <laughs> so no, one is brutal but cunning and the other one's cunning but brutal. Oh my God. <laughs> There are 30 year old men who listen to this lore. Yes. Okay. But that's why Gazkol seems to be so focused on trying to get there, is because it seems like this is the epicenter of the orcs. They want it. They want so they're to drawn there. to it, essentially. They're drawn to it. Okay. You so think it's wah energy? There might be some wah energy <laughs> that's still there. Wah, wah. Because remember, it's like war, but. British. 
Wa energy. Wa energy. Wa. So there, there also might be some parts of the technology the Admac didn't quite get rid of because the entire planet was made to be teleported mm -hmm. anywhere. So they could just move it around. So there is a lot that's there. But that's why Armageddon might be why it's so important and why so much of the fights are there. There are other things that have come up. So the first war of Armageddon was about demons, but the second and the third were all about the orcs. Trying oh, wait, to how many there. how many wars of Armageddon are there? There are total? three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And why is it such a big part of the story? You said that like this is something that you should cover because not many people are covering it and it's a very big part of the Warhammer lore. And some of the people on our Discord were asking about it as well. But why is it so important to a lay person like me? Why should I care? Because it's just a very big war front. It brought mm -hmm. out some of the biggest names for the lore. So you have Commissar Yarrick, who was a big name there. You have the Black Templars that fought at Hell's Reach, Helbrecht, and I forget the other guy's name. Um, but there's been huge wars over it and big name characters that have been there and stories that have been defined by it. So the last stand of Hell's Reach is a major that novel. That sounds like Hell's Deep. Yeah. Lord of the Rings. That actually sounds like, remember like it's the Battle of Hell's Deep, I think. Yes. It yeah, because you said the last dance of Hell's Reach. Like, I'm telling you, it actually sounds like a Lord of the Rings battle. Yeah, might be. I played, I played the PS2 game yeah. of the second book. So, a second movie. Which one was the second? Hell's Deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't play it. I actually really Look liked, it up. I like Two Towers better That's right. than I teach Return you something. I mean, I taught you something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't grammar well. But it's like, yeah, Hell's Reach was a major last stand with the, the chaplain of the Black Templars holding off against Gargants, which are the giant stompy orc things that look like they have dresses on kind of stupid looking um hades hive was one of the major uh stands of yark yark mm -hmm. fight quite a bit there but that's why people want to know about armageddon and why it's a big thing is because there's stories told around it big name characters and why doesn't anyone cover this then it seems like it's a it's, it's kind of this assumption that people know about it really that's what i've kind of okay. noticed is like every like Play On's done a couple of things where yeah. they do narrative games around Hell's Reach or around other things. I've never actually watched a narrative game, so I don't know what it is. It's basically just a normal game. Oh, okay. But it's set within a narrative for how the battle will kind of go, so it could go one so way. So then is there a winner that's dictated if it's set within a narrative? Yes. That sucks. I don't want to play <laughs> knowing I'm going to die. Well, no, it might be that you can tactically get your way out of it. Uh -huh. So narrative games, especially like bigger ones, they're like, the there'll be multiple people playing and how those games come out decide the narrative later on okay but it's also because there's so many codexes and supplements that have come out on how to play games around the idea of hell's reach around the war of armageddon so there's this assumption from the people that are no, are in the know of the lore that it's like oh yeah that's just the thing it's like yeah the war of armageddon and everyone like if you're new you're like yeah armageddon I know that. You don't want to sound dumb for not knowing what it you is. You don't want to sound dumb for not knowing Seriously? what it is. Seriously? So I think that's- You know, after this episode, I'm going to go on YouTube and I'm going to search, what is the War of Armageddon? Well, either way, this is why is Armageddon yeah. so important because, again- I'm going to search, why is Armageddon so I, important? I kept looking around for this too. Yeah. Ulanor is such an important piece. So yeah. because it was- How do you spell Ulanor? U-L-L-A-N-O-R? Of course. I think. Okay. okay. But that was the fulcrum at which- like the turning point of the Great Crusade, the turning point of the Primarchs and the and the Imperium as a whole. That was the point where everything went to crap. It kind of mirrors the the triumph of Julius Caesar in the in Rome. Thank you that for putting it into context. I understand. I know you understand history, barely. <laughs> But it has a historical thing where it's a big parade that tried to show off that, yeah, everything is like fantastic now. Look how powerful we are. Mm -hmm. And the cracks start showing between each of the like players. Mm -hmm. And slowly things start to divide after that. The mistrust. And that is why Armageddon is so important. Yeah. And then the War Beast, they were trying to do a okay. semi, the Horus Heresy style where they were writing mm -hmm. out a bunch of stories. So War of the Beast is an absolute goddamn mess. 100% mm -hmm. total. Okay. I want to leave it at that, though, for mm -hmm. now, explaining the history, the background okay. of the of Armageddon. So that way, next time we can go in depth of each of the individual wars. And so we're not doing ideas. one episode of war? No. Really? Oh, no. Why not? 
I feel like that's just a, like the natural thing. We we just call this a series. Would you like me? It's a two parter. Would you like me to spend forty minutes describing the battle movements of particular factions as they fight I one mean, another? I wouldn't care, but like. And then Gazkol shows up <sighs> and attacks them from the flank. But Yarik, no, being the man no, that he is, no, understands. I don't. No, okay, stop. <laughs> I thought it was a big topic, so I thought you needed more time. No, I just wanted to do the two parts. That way we could get the gist of it okay. for people to understand mm -hmm. the names that are important to it, mm -hmm. why things are important. But that's it for today. We'll leave part two on the actual wars for next time and okay. about the Steel Legion. All right. And yeah. Okay. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And if you have any ideas for future episodes that we would do or what you would like Nick to teach me, let us know. If you want to support us, we have Patreon memberships and YouTube memberships. Please sure to follow us on whatever platform you follow us on. And we would like to call out our newest member today, Brett G. Thank you for supporting us. And the names of everyone else are beside me. All right. Bye.